Viewer discretion is advised. I can tell that their hearts break for us. The researchers, I mean. They stand next to the security officers when they decide who will go with them to that room and mutter their apologies for what it is that they will unwillingly subject us to. Once they have selected 50 women, they take them one by one to some other portion of this facility and then, I don't know, but I can hear their screams. I cover my ears in fright and sob all night long when it happens. We all hear their panicked cries begging for mercy before sickening wet sounds of flesh being torn. Otherworldly roars fill the facility from beasts I can't even begin to conjure from my imagination. And then silence, until the next woman is brought in. I remember grabbing hold of a researcher as he walked by and begged him to stop whatever it was that they were doing to us. Several security officers raised their weapons at me, but the researcher stopped them. I screamed at him again, asking why they were doing this. He broke down after that and hugged me, apologizing profusely. Softly, he then held my face and told me I looked like his daughter, smiling weakly as he did this. I whispered now, asking him why this was happening. Because there is no other option. It's either this or the world. We didn't have a choice. He let go of me and I stumbled back, unable to say anything. He then told security I wouldn't be selected this time around as he wiped his eyes. But just as before, another 50 victims were chosen and I went to bed numb to the world. I didn't see that man again after that day. Part of me thinks he was the only reason I've lasted as long as I have. And my time is now. I just want to get this over with. As I stepped into the room, a child slowly turned to face me and smiled. Behind him, I saw a disembodied head. It was a woman I recognized from the selection the other day. Ha, huh, good. I was wondering when is my next meal. Then he said something and distorted and twisted, turning into a horrifying monster that I can't even begin to describe. The world is cruel, isn't it? Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today, we bring you SCP Foundation Apollyon Class Object SCP-6450. SCP-6450 also known as the end of the beginning, is the corpse of a white adolescent believed to be between the ages of 9 and 14. The physical composition of the body is in a permanent state of decay, but never fully succumbs to decomposition. After extensive experimentation, the body is indeed dead on a cellular level and is in a permanent state of brain death. Other than its decaying form, the foundation insignia has been perfectly surgically cut into its chest by unknown means. 6450 has two personalities, one of which takes complete control upon awakening. It is never known which one will come out. The first personality, SCP-6450-A, is extremely hostile and aggressive. As soon as it awakens, it will scream at Foundation staff to bring O5 members to it so that it may talk with them and make demands. Should any of its demands be denied, it will go on a bloody rampage. The second personality, SCP-6450-B, acts as a young child. He is kind, peaceful, and likes to play games or ask for certain toys. Both personalities automatically die after a period of nearly half an hour. When Personality A is awake, it has a wide array of anomalous abilities compared to Personality B, as follows. Extremely long limbs, immense physical strength, cannibalistic tendencies, mastery of old languages, vast knowledge of Catholicism, cognitohazards used in containment breaches, creation of organic and anomalous entities to serve its goals. Over the course of numerous rampages and containment breaches, 6450 has demonstrated the ability to create four anonymous entities. Entity 1, 6450-1-A, a very large and grossly obese humanoid entity with golden fixtures for facial features with hooks for hands. 6450-1-A desires to eat any human it can get its hands on while brutally torturing them. Entity 2. 6450-1-B. These entities are small creatures with four legs, likened to demonic horse-like beings. Extremely fast yet weak, often hunts prey in packs. Entity 3. 6450-1-C. 
Their appearance is that of a normal human male, yet is freakishly tall and possesses a mechanical orb. This orb is used to brutally break the bones of its target and make the target easier for 6450-1-A and C to attack. 6450-1-C can speak, but only in an unknown language. Entity 4 6450-1-D Looks like a perfect copy of 6450 that screams for help. It will then unhook its jaw to supernatural lengths and regurgitate instances of 6450-1-B. It can also eat cadavers and use the material to produce more instances of 6450-1-B. Thankfully, all of these entities and 6450 himself can be brought down through modern firearms and explosives. 6450, however, possesses great regenerative abilities and can heal from all damage but will become unconscious due to severe bodily trauma from an attack. It must be noted that containment for it is impossible. Furthermore, it poses a threat that has been classified as an inevitable XK-class end-of-the-world scenario. The only reason this has not yet come to pass is due to Procedure 6450-Utah, but even that will not last forever. 6450 was first subdued and captured after an extremely heavy firefight with Foundation Armed Forces. The township where the fighting occurred saw an estimated number of civilians killed to be near 70%. While Foundation Forces managed to corner 6450 to a more rural area of the township, they could not put it down nor fully contain it until the utilization of Procedure 6450-Utah. The procedure in question consists of offering 6450 50 women between the ages of 18 and 25. Only then will 6450 be appeased and will enter into a dormant state. If this procedure is not done properly, 6450 and its created entities will become much more resistant to conventional weaponry. Personality A of 6450 has explained to the SCP Foundation that as long as the procedure is enacted whenever it wants, an XK-class end-of-the-world scenario will be avoided. With the limited time frame in which Procedure 6450 Utah can be enacted, the Foundation has been trying desperately for years to find suitable substitutes to replace human victims. The first substitute tried was a female pig. The pig was quickly devoured and 6450 was slightly confused at the offering, yet became insulted and threatened the Foundation to never use a pig again. The second substitute was a female model automaton that the Foundation designed and created to look as human-like as possible, including its biology. Upon realizing the D-Class was an automaton, 6450 went ballistic and killed every single anomalous entity and Foundation staff member on site before making its way to Site Director Cole. Get, get back. I've got backup on their way. We can resolve this without any more violence. Just, uh, let's just talk, okay? Talk. Okay then, Site Director. As you wish. Suddenly the room around Cole began to melt and shift as 6450 reached out his hand towards him. Its eyes burned with maddening flame, staring right into Cole's as he invaded his mind. And now, surrender your will. No. No. Get out of my head. Ugh. He clutched his head in agony and rolled around the floor, begging for the pain to cease. Eventually, it stopped. When Cole got up, he saw 6450, now towering over him, looking down at him from high above. Please, spare me. Let me go. Silent! With a shout from it, Cole's head began to hurt again, and his lips fused together, causing him to scream in a muffled voice. I was nothing but a boy when that demonic creature took hold of my body, my mind my soul. I remember how it constantly slaughtered those victims again and again. It was terrifying, and then I grew numb to it. For so, so long, he did as he pleased, using its frightening powers and creating those aberrant creatures to do its bidding. You gave him brides, while I was trapped within my own body, unable to do anything but watch. He harassed my soul for years, demanding I give him everything. But I couldn't. I wouldn't. My fear eventually gave way to confusion and then abject rage. Before he could understand what I was doing, I had already won. He was in my domain and far from his, and that made him weak. This cosmic and primordial god was now nothing once I realized what it was I could do. The fool made me stronger than he could even begin to comprehend. And so, what did I do? 
I forced him to play his part with the Foundation, the O5 Council, the Administrator, everyone. I was left to focus on learning the powers of this sniveling god as I tortured his mind when we slept, snatching from him his essence and power. I considered ending his existence, but no, that's so dull. Instead, I let him take control every now and again, but even that was just to humor him. And once I had broken him completely after a few years, I set my sights on your so-called savior, the SCP Foundation. Procedure 6450 Utah? Just a game I like to play. How funny is it watching them all panic when they have to use it, all without knowing it doesn't make a difference at all. Want to know a secret? It's a good one, I promise. There's only one personality in this body, and it's far worse than any god you may have thought it was. Why do this, you ask? Why not just end it all? I just want to savor it. It's only the beginning of the end, after all. Starting with you, Site Director. When the backup arrived, they found Cole's lifeless body in his office, with his mouth agape and his face transfixed in a screaming expression. 6450 was nowhere to be found. 